Ken, this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Waze, Waze, something like that. Run everything I need to run in my house during a grid down situation. Let's test it and find out. Let's unbox this. Some terminal bolts and uh, caps. Got some documentation. And here's the battery. They've got uh, kind of a cheat sheet for how to connect them in parallel and series. Four or less pieces in series but uh, up to 10 pieces in parallel, that's pretty good. So your charging voltage, 14.4, recommended 14.6 is the max. Charging current is 100 amps max. 50 amps is obviously more of a 0.5C rate. Continuous uh, discharge, 100 amps with 200 amps for three seconds. In the manual, there's not uh, too much uh, information. There is no low temperature charging protection, it appears. No smart uh, app connectivity or Bluetooth or anything like that. I do appreciate uh, when people uh, include these curves uh, in their documentation uh, for charging and discharging. Uh, it's kind of nice to uh, be able to see uh, those and uh, how the battery behaves in uh, different scenarios. If for some reason the battery uh, ships to you uh, to shut off, there's a cheat sheet here for how to activate the battery in the event that the BMS is completely shut off. How long can this Waze battery run a full-size kitchen refrigerator freezer? This is my primary fridge freezer in my kitchen. So we're opening and closing it, getting in and into it, uh, for every meal and in between every meal. And so this is a good real world test. So we're gonna hook this battery up to the DC input of this power station. This power station serves two purposes. One, gives me an inverter to convert the DC power to AC power. And two, sometimes I'm not right here when this battery dies. And so I'm able to carry the fridge over uh, with uh, the battery reserve in this. We will also be doing a capacity test. I've got the Victron Smart Shunt uh, right here and it's going to be measuring the amount of uh, power that uh, we're able to draw from this battery. You can see that I've got all the things zeroed out here in the app. Now I do have to say that this is less than a 0.2c rate, so sometimes the numbers get a little skewed to the lower side of things, but we're all about doing things in the real world, and uh, this is a real world scenario. The test has started at 1.29 p.m. I'm a little late to uh, getting back to this uh, test here, but this fridge has been uh, running now for quite some time. Based on the logs that uh, the power station recorded, this battery died at about 4.30 this morning. So that gave us about 15 hours of runtime on this fridge. Our capacity test uh, results, we got 98 amp hours. And like I said, that test uh, happens at less than a 0.2c rate. As long as it's above 95, I call it a pass. And the Waze 12 volt, 100 amp per lithium iron phosphate battery power, a full size vacuum cleaner. Piece of cake, no sweat. And this Waze 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run. Follow the black cord. A high end desktop gaming PC workstation got three 4K monitors and a 4K gaming benchmark uh, running right there. With that happening, this uh, PC is pulling just uh, under 600 watts. This is a UPS unit from Golden Mate with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Very cool device. Anyway, we can see that uh, we're just under 600 watts. So with that amount of juice being pulled, this computer would uh, be able to operate for about two hours at this level of performance from the 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. If you were just uh, doing more basic stuff that uh, wasn't pushing it as hard, uh, you'd be able to get significantly longer run times. In the Waze 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery powering this 3000 watt inverter run, follow the black cord. A microwave. Now, yes, the microwave's in my garage. Uh, I just uh, keep it here for testing for you guys. I actually don't cook in it. Let's see how it does. It started it. Piece of cake. So run for a sec. Sweet. 
It ran it for a full 30 seconds. So that's good and bad. Uh, good from the standpoint that it ran it. Bad from the standpoint that that microwave pulls more than 100 amps from one of these batteries. So if this has overcurrent protection, it's going to need more time than just 30 seconds to trip. And I personally like to see it trip a little faster. But this did run the microwave. This inverter is very large and heavy. So for this next test, we're going to use some extension cords. But uh, can this uh, Waze 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run? Follow the cord. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. Let's find out. Piece of cake for it. No problem. This mini split can pull up to about uh, 900 watts at full tilt. And uh, when it first starts up, I frequently see it going to, you know, 650, 700 watt. As it uh, equalizes out, it'll just kind of start to coast and just maintain the temperature once it's uh, brought the temperature down. And uh, I frequently see this only using uh, just over 200 watts when it's just kind of coasting. So that means on a fully charged 12 volt 100 amp hour battery like we're testing today, this unit here would run for approximately two to four hours. Again, depending on uh, the conditions and how hard this is running. Okay, can the Waze 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run? Follow the black cord. A full home gas furnace. Now we're powering this through this easy generator switch. If you live in a cold climate and rely on a gas fired furnace, one of these is a must. I have a whole video about how I wired this up, so I'll be sure and link that down in the description. Let's see if we can fire this baby up. Okay, now the fan is fully up to speed. So yes. This uh, Waze battery can easily power a gas furnace. Now this doesn't have an app, so we can't see the uh, draw, but uh, I know from past testing that that furnace pulls just over 500 watts. And so that means that this battery would run that furnace for a little over four hours continuously. Can this Waze 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power all this black cord? A batch of wash. For sure, the 3000 watt Ronengi inverter can start and run both of these machines. So the weak link is the battery. Now, the hardest part of this test is the dryer. This is a gas dryer. You can see that uh, we've got two 120 volt plugs right here, and you can see that the 240 volt dryer plug is empty. You might be able to see the, dry the gas line back there somewhere. You can also see that uh, the receptacle is empty. We are using power from the inverter. Now, the hardest thing with this dryer is the startup surge. So to get that drum started and uh, going with a load of heavy, wet clothes, and in this case, this is towels, so probably the heaviest you'll run into. So if it gets it up to speed and uh, started, it uh, will easily be able to run it because it only uses 400 or so watts once it's up to speed but uh, that surge is incredibly heavy. The washer is quite a bit easier. We do have a full load of wash here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the dryer and then we'll move to the washer. Three, two, one. Ooh, it struggled a little bit, but it did it. All right, let's do a batch of wash. Can this weighs battery power an electric hot plate? Let's find out. We'll let it run uh, for a minute here and uh, see if it uh, trips out on overcurrent uh, protection or anything. All right, it's been running this uh, hot plate now for a good uh, 30 seconds and uh, it has not uh, tripped off on uh, overcurrent protection. We are pulling more than 100 amps uh, from that battery. So similar to the microwave test, uh, this, I'm gonna turn this off now. This battery does not have overcurrent protection. More or very least fast acting overcurrent protection. So the good news is it can run heavy loads that uh, other batteries can't run. Bad news is you are pulling more than 100 amps uh, from that battery. Just got taken out of the freezer and it's actually been in there for two solid days. So. This is a very frozen battery. 
It is discharging power though, because uh, we can see Victron Smart Shunt, uh, which I've got right here, is indeed running. Let's uh, connect this uh, battery charger and uh, let's see if there is any current that goes into the battery for low temperature charging protection. Here we go. No power is flowing into the battery, so even though this doesn't say it has low temperature charging protection, specifically, you can see it right there, no power is going in. So it actually does protect itself uh, from low temperature charging. How does this battery compare to the competition? Well, be sure and check the link in the description so that uh, you can look at this spreadsheet where it ranks all the batteries I've tested so far and uh, rates them and uh, I found that to be very valuable for my viewers. So go check that out. In general, this uh, performed quite well. It's just a get the job done, no frills kind of battery. But tell me what your thoughts are. I love hearing from you. Leave comments down below. You guys always are so smart and have so many great things to share. I try to read all of your comments and I try to respond to as many of them as I possibly can. If you appreciate uh, these kinds of real world tests, please uh, consider doing three things for me. That would be a comment, a like, and a subscribe. We really appreciate uh, those things and uh, that gives us the encouragement and excitement uh, to persevere. You can't tell these real world tests take quite a bit of time and effort and uh, I love uh, getting the positive reinforcement from you guys uh, to continue. We appreciate it. Be safe and we'll catch you all next time.